Buenas tardes, nogalenses, fronterizos, friends, family. Um, it is me, Joe Wright, el gringo más mexicano, here at Santa Cruz County Public Media Studios with Valeria Tapia. How's it going? Hi, doing good. Thanks awesome. for having me. So I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm really excited to talk about you, you know, what you've got. It's, it's this DJ business that you've built is very cool. Um, don't tell me details yet because we'll get into that. All right. But I do want to say um, this, the, what, what you're doing and what you've built, is, it's so cool. And it, it's the fact that it's this passion of yours um, that you really, really love is, is very, very cool. Um, so it. Yeah. We'll get more into that. Um, first, we got events and news. All right, so for events, sorry, I'm used to actually having this tablet with me and I forgot <laughs> it. <laughs> so now I got to use my laptop and I thought I had everything organized, but I did not. It always, it always happens. Something, something always comes up, right? Okay, events. Sorry, guys. First is actually just coming up in two days. Do you like tamales? Tamales? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean... Yeah. I mean, so it's our Mexican food right there, you know. <laughs> se, van a no, se van a enojar conmigo because I don't like corn tamales. No. What? Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. I don't I mean, like. So every respect, everyone has different likes, right? Of course, so, yeah. of course. But there's going to be. I do like tamales, just not the corn ones. There's a festival binacional del tam, de tamal, and that's going to be in two days on November 17th at 5 p.m. at the Consulado General de Mexico, right here in Nogales, Arizona. On, Croft, on Cardwell Street, sorry, um, there's going to be ex, um, you know, exposition booths and stuff like that. Nogales High School is going to have a, a table setting up with their tamales. Universidad de Durango, Santander. Universidad, um, actually, I don't know how to say that. <laughs> but, no, no, here it is. Universidad Vizcaya de las Americas también va a estar. Cool. It's going to be very, very cool. Um, some cool local organizations like the... Fresh Produce Association is sponsoring this event. It's very cool. Um, then the next day on Saturday, there's two things happening. There's the Amado Craft Farmers Market in um, at the Longhorn Grill and Saloon, and that from 9 p.m. to 2 p.m. and also starting at 9 p.m. into Macaquery actually is the Amado Chili Cookoff, and we are we love Nogales is actually going to be there at this event. We're going to broadcast. It's going to be very cool, and our very own Marita Higuera is going to be um, discussing her books and her work as an author. Also, don't forget that there, this week is um, the community food, this month, sorry, is the Community Food Bank Food Drive. You can drop off um, donations at Cropper's Nogales Auto Center. Um, and that's from the whole month, from the 1st to the 30th. They need most peanut butter, canned fruit, condiments, cereal, canned meats, canned vegetables, canned soups, and canned tomato product, products. So any of those things, if you if you have them lying around or if you feel like donating, drive it down to Croppers. They are literally filling a truck bed of food. Nice. Yeah, very, very cool. I was actually talking to them about it this today. It's very, very cool. All right, then also um, this month is the Christmas Village down here on Carum Park, right on Morley Avenue. Okay. Yeah, have you seen it yet? Have you seen it ever? Like the Christmas... They do this Christmas village in, in Karen Park, right there where the gazebo is, right here on Morley. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I have to live more. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what they do is they have these, this whole like mini miniature village. Okay. Like set up all around. It's very, very cool. And that will be going on from November 22nd. They're still setting it up. November 22nd to January 7th, it will be... They're available just for people from the community to walk through and check out. It's really cool. You're going to have to come cool. check it out. We'll do, yeah. Yeah. Um, then in Patagonia, there's the Holiday Art Walk, November 24th and 5th at 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And, and that will be, I think, right on Main Street, right where, the, um, where all the galleries and shops are. Then, finally, the Christmas tree lighting ceremony is... Oh, wait, no, this isn't the last one. This isn't the last one. The Christmas tree lighting ceremony for the city of Nogales will be on oh, Rio Rico, I'm sorry, in Rio Rico, will be at the Garrett's Plaza. They have, they're going to set up a tree kind of like Rockefeller Center in, in, oh, wow, in okay. New York, right? Yeah, yeah. Not as big, but, but it's still very, very cool. Um, November 22nd from 2 to 7 p.m. There's going to be music. There's going to be food trucks. They're going to have face painting. It's going to be a whole festival for this tree lighting ceremony. 
Also on the 25th, um, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., so what you could do is you just you, you go to Nogales first and do this card toy drive. All donations will benefit children from Santa Cruz County. At, um, that's the Jesus Cordova Memorial Foundation that's doing this. Nice. Um, Saturday, November 25th, from 11 to 3 p.m., uh, right on Grand Avenue on 3131 North Grand Avenue. So you go there, you take some toys to the toy drive, then you drive to Rio Rico, where Garrett's Plaza is, and you enjoy the tree lighting ceremony. Perfect. All right, so that is it for events. Now we've got the news. So one of the biggest news um, items that we have, it's a, a trial that we've been following, is the trial of George Allen Kelly, um, who, who is um, charged with shooting a man on his property. Um, last year, his, he was, his attorneys had appealed um, the deposition of his wife. The, the prosecutors wanted to depose his wife and use her testimony against George and Kelly. And, Kelly. <clears throat> and his attorneys opposed this. They were appealing it to a higher court. The higher court ruled in favor of the prosecutor and also ruled that the text messages that he exchanged with a friend prior to the event are admissible as evidence in court. Um, in some happier news, the, this weekend was the Veterans Day Parade. Were you able to, did you, were you there? Unfortunately, we had a, a gig. You had a gig? Yeah. Well, that's not unfortunate then. That's, that's, that's <laughs> very unfortunate. unfortunate we couldn't attend, right? <laughs> but so, we were busy doing, you know, our business stuff. If you weren't able to see it, we have a photo gallery on our Facebook page, on We Love Nogales Facebook page, and okay. the entire broadcast of the parade on our, on our Facebook or on wherever our... Our um, apps are, whether it's Amazon Fire TV or Roku, it's all available there. Um, oh, I already talked about the Christmas Village. <laughs> what about the parade? And so that's the next one. The yeah. Christmas Light Parade registration is already open. Um, you contact the city of Nogales. I believe uh, Lisa Montiel would be the primary contact for this. And the date for it is December 6th. One thing that's really cool about the, about the parade this year is there's actually going to be food trucks set up. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, so it's not just going to be like the parade. It's going to be yeah. an event. Like you don't just show up, stand on, stand around and wait for the parade to come, which is always cool. I'm not trying to diss on the parade. It's a very, very yeah. beautiful parade. But this time there will actually be food trucks. I'm assuming they're going to have coffee, hot chocolate, things like that. Very... No, no, champurro. Champurro. Yeah. Obvio. <laughs> obvio. Yeah. Um, so that's very cool. Nice. I'm very excited for this year's cool. parade. No need to go to Circle K. <laughs> right? Yeah, don't go to Circle K yeah. to it first. They'll have it set up for you right there. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> that always gets, always a circle case, especially right here. And sometimes if you're Say on the yeah, other side, it's too far. Exactly, yeah, right? Yeah, so you miss out. Exactly. So yeah, it's going to be very, very cool this year. Make sure if you are interested in registering, registration is still open, and the date for the parade is December 6th. Last item of news is actually about... Um, well, our own very own, again, Maritza Higuera, on her incredible show, Border Connections, interviewed uh, an Emory Award winning director and oh. the subject of her most recent documentary, Coronado, The New Evidence. There will be a screening for this in December, and if you are interested in more information, go ahead and check out, again, our Facebook page or wherever our, you can find We Love Nogales videos, YouTube, etc. Um, and check out Maritza Higuera's Border Connections interview, most recent interview, um, again, on all Wheel of Nogales platforms. Super cool information. It was a great interview. And, and it's just a really, really cool. I mean, it's, it changes the history of Coronado a little bit. Okay. Which is really, really cool. Interesting. Gotta check that out. All right. So um, before we jump into the interview, of course, we want to thank all of our allies, Croppers Nogales Auto Center, the um, Arizona at Work. Um, Pep, Grace Candles, and I'm sure I'm missing somebody. <laughs> um, Mariposa Community Health Center, of course. Um, the, without them, this broadcast would not be possible. So if you're at home, give a round of applause to our allies. <laughs> All right, Valeria, now time to the fun, for the fun part of the interview. Okay. Uh, ever since I read this article, I've been really excited. I've wanted to, I, I wanted to book you on the show. Perfect. Thank you. Appreciate it. So tell me first who you are. Like who you are and, and what it is that you do, not just the DJ work, but your regular job as well. So, yes. So I was uh, born and raised here in Nogales. Um, I went to, I just recently graduated from University of Arizona in a Bachelor of 
degree of, called information science and arts and a minor in music. So I'm excited for that. Um, I started this business as a way to gain career experience in audio, something that I was trying to develop. I was like, okay, when I was in college, I was like, okay, what do I like? What do I want to do? So I'm like, okay. Um, I took a music technology elective in high school, um, here in Nogales High School, and I really enjoyed how you can make literally sound wave turn into something else completely. I just, then from there, I was like, okay, I want to really learn more. Yeah. So we started a tiny boom box that we had in our house, and it's like generic microphone it comes with. Um, we started just seeing karaoke from YouTube and turning that tiny thing up. <laughs> Obviously, it was sound distorted, but you know, but cool. what do you expect Very when cool. you're starting yeah. out, right? So yeah, um, we started like that, and then we're like, okay. I really got into sound. I was like, okay, I want to really make this sound See, pro. now you're, you're in dangerous territory because I'm, I'm about to turn this whole interview into the science of sound waves. Okay. <laughs> but no, but we can't do that. I want to talk about you. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's where it started, yeah. basically. So, yeah, I, I love music. I love cars. I love, you know, that's me. <laughs> Very cool. Um, I've been fortunate enough to have family that supported me in this. So um, Yeah, and unfortunately, then, your dad I, wasn't able to make it to the interview, but he's... He's been there every step of the way helping you out with this, right? Oh, yes, for sure. Without him, this wouldn't have been possible. And uh, as of right now, I work at Santa Cruz County Superior Court. I am the court systems analyst and field trainer, meaning that I help um, people, the judges, the clerks, uh, the court administration, anybody there in the county probation with their technical issues that they might have during court and outside of court. Um, I also, part of my field training job is to training on train them on the most up-to-date court systems that any updates that come up, I got to train them on that or anything that just in general that you think might benefit them in their work. Uh, you have to do that too. Very cool. Um, yeah. So then, then after that, I have my DJ business. Which, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, well, let's talk about the DJ business. Um, it's, it's not just necessarily being a DJ. It's, it's, it's a little bit more broad than that, right? Yes. Okay. So let, explain the, the business to me. So like, the, as if I'm a customer that you're pitching to. Okay, yeah. Right. So as the card says, music for all occasions. But right. we also offer uh, karaoke, meaning that people can sing their heart out at a no-judgment zone. Nice. <laughs> all right. So um, we offer all types of musical genres. And we're. I wanted to make a DJ tailored on the customer, uh, meaning that I wanted to make their event special. So we give them the opportunity to give us a, an idea of what type of music they like. Okay. So I try, the challenge here is I try to mix what, let's say I'm playing a completely different genre and they come with another genre that they want. The challenge is to try to mix that and make it sound good from the other one. So that's what we try to focus on, customer satisfaction. So we ask them, hey, we, we offer services for any party, but to make this, it's your party, you're paying us, we want to make you happy. So what is your preferred music genre? And we focus on that. Cool. So it's so, a tailored experience, really. Yeah, to, to yeah it's a more customer. of a customizable type. And so this karaoke yeah. is like portable karaoke. Somebody's throwing a party and they want to have karaoke at their party. Yeah. Come to yeah. you guys. So in the same DJ system that I'm using, we just basically just throw in the karaoke software with it. And they we have two wireless mics that they use to sing. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. All right. So, so when did you figure out that sound was your passion? Uh from that class I took in high school. Okay. And then uh, from there, I took more classes in college, and that's when I realized the appreciation for sound is, you know, like a life without sound would be kind of very depressing. Oh, yes. But um, it's when we don't, it's the tiny things well, that, you know what I mean? So here's the thing that I think yeah. about sound, too, is the thing, one of the things that's cool about sound. I just love it. Well, <laughs> is that, like you hear it, but there's physical manifestations of those waves. Yes. Right? Like mm -hmm. you feel it. Yes, you, you, you feel know, it. That's you the thing. You feel it and you hear it. So it activates two different parts of your brain at the same time, yeah. which I think is, you know, yes. it's one of the coolest parts. The of serotonin and dopamine. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and, and, and so you get this, it, it, this rush of brain chemicals because of your being filling it on two different, you're sensing it rather, yes. on two different levels. 
and then how you we can manipulate a simple sine wave or sound wave right yep. into something we call music exactly so. <laughs> exactly yeah. very cool and then and then even music itself like you said so many different genres and stuff like that it, it can transfigure into into morph into almost anything yes and it takes me reminds me of a quote that i my dad sent me i don't remember from who it was but more, most of if you think about it generally um the events that we've all had in our lives, the most happy moments have somehow included music in it. So it really, since music is universal, it helps, I feel that I think it brings people together. And I've seen sure. it from oh, yeah. my audiences. And if I look on YouTube for my favorite artists that, you know, at those festivals or, you know, even the concerts, like, hey, you want to go, you know, it's well, a, you know what I mean? It so brings people thing together. about music yeah. is that, that, I mean, there are different experiences based on how you're listening to it. Because yes. how you when you listen to it alone, it can is is a powerful experience, but also going to a concert or or going to a DJ show or something like that and having this communal, experiencing yeah. it with with um, a community, is also extremely powerful and two completely different sensations. Yes, it yeah. makes you like forget about realist reality, right, for just a moment. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. and um, you have fun too. It's it's just fun making it it's fun you know showing it to people even if it if i make a song that totally sucks you'd be like <laughs> you had some sort of moment where you enjoyed making at least one type of sound you know <laughs> very cool yeah so have you ever done any of the experiments like with sand to see how what the what certain sound waves look like in the on the spectrum have you ever done any of those experiments um unfortunately no, no. but okay. i know what you mean by yes yeah yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> those are um those are really cool. You should, I, I'd recommend anybody to go to YouTube and look up these sound wave experiments that they do with sand or water. Very, very cool things. Okay. Um, all right. So back to your passion, which we got a little <laughs> bit off subject. Sorry. <laughs> so how did this turn into a family business and how has your family helped you manifest this, this dream of yours? So, yeah, I mentioned to my dad saying that, hey, you know, because he, he asked me career questions. I hey, so basic question what do you want to do with your life right yeah. <laughs> and I was like well I know I want to do something with technology which is why I studied computers but then I was like okay but I want to focus in the computational art aspect which was and I chose sound as one of them because there's other ones like film and, and photography of course um so I chose sound because I really thought it was it, I thought it was you know the science of it is just very interesting I thought it was very natural to me it was very great and powerful what you could do with it right you can feel it like you said and um yeah so my dad was okay cool and then we had already started doing all these karaoke stuff experiments at our house with the boom box and stuff yeah and then from there he was like, okay he was willing to help me invest in equipment um coming from a low-income family i didn't expect you know to get anything expensive i just try and buy the most cheapest mixer the most cheapest thing you can just to start off of course yeah. touching it feeling it the, you know learning from it <laughs> um i wish i could have gone to a music school but financial wasn't financial circumstances didn't let me but i didn't let that stop me i took advantage of what i had in my college years of what was you know mm -hmm. available and stuff and obviously the open source of the internet right yeah, yeah. <laughs> The, then, the free university right there. <laughs> yes. And then from there, I told him, okay, I want to, I told him my plans, right? I want to be an engineer. I want to, you know, I think this is unique. I really love it. Okay, cool. So he's like, okay, hey, why don't we try a DJ? Because, and not just because of the, the love of sound, but also because it helped me build my social skills. I used to be very antisocial. Um, and, you know, I got bored of being antisocial uh -huh. so i was like okay it's a challenge to get out of that comfort zone but the dj i think what he saw in me and my dad was that if we create a dj it's going to help you both get out of your you know comfort zone and build the audio experience that you want and i saw it that way too oh this is going to be a career path thing for me yeah. this is going to really help me build my career and that's how i saw it i didn't necessarily see it as oh wow a dj right you yeah, know yeah, i saw it as like some sort of audio experiment with yeah. my career and then from there That's it slowly awesome. evolved to being a dj and i started loving hey i started listening to music on spotify i spent a lot of time on spotify and i was like hey okay i discovered new artists that maybe this song sounds very familiar to this song and i started making all sorts of playlists 
I have like 160 playlists now. <laughs> um, and from there, I was like, okay, I want to learn to mix. Um, go on YouTube because there's, I can't attend a DJ class, you know, or, you know, it's too expensive or, you know, so I started just getting, you know, the controller um, after I bought one. Um, and I started from there, you know, started Very blending cool. it, started listening to more music, appreciating it more. Very cool. So what's yeah. your setup like? I mean, it's all digital now, but you yeah. still have, you got the turntable. Yeah, it's yeah. a MIDI uh, DJ controller. It's the Pioneer. Um, I started with the SB3. Okay. And then I, then right now I have the DD D1, I think. I don't know what that means, yeah, but it sounds but cool. Like, <laughs> I, I, this might be wrong. You might get mad at me, yeah. but like it has a weird name. It's the new one. It has, it's a small controller about the size of the table here. Okay. It's not your two thousand dollar one. Yeah, that's no. the goal, right? But yeah. like, <laughs> no, it's it's a, it's a simple DJ controller that connects via MIDI to your computer. Cool. So MIDI meaning that it's a way that the computer can recognize, hey, you're a DJ controller. Cool. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, and and so what is the plan to build this business? I mean, you've already built it pretty. You've got it's very cool. Like all of the whole situation, the whole the whole plan is very cool because it's. Like, like it says right there, entertainment and karaoke service, yeah. right? Um, There's a reason for that too. <laughs> yeah, so because yeah. it, it, it's it's more than just you being a DJ at a party. Right? Yes, it's a whole entertainment experience, I guess you could say. Yes, because my dad, he's good at being an MC. Okay. Um, so that we blend our strengths together. So I'm not so good at being an MC, but he is good at being an MC, and we played at quinceañeras before. So I mean they use that service that we offer it to our clients if you want it it's there if you don't okay we respect your decision you yeah. know we're not gonna push you hey you should use really we should really really try this you know yeah yeah for um sure. no we just let them choose so we want to make it a cust like i said a customizable experience for them okay. and the reason why i didn't put Valeria's dj in karaoke service was because i researched it and someone else has it oh. you know so i don't want <laughs> copyright stuff on me yeah so for sure. I was like, and also, okay, well, we want to make it unique because we do customize our setups. It's mostly my dad. He, I think he deserves the credit for that. He's good at, you know, making stages and designing them and making them look different, you know? Oh, very <laughs> so cool. I, I think I, I would give that credit to him. <laughs> so what's the plan for the future? I mean, do you plan on growing this or, or you know, what, I mean, where do you guys plan, what do you guys plan on? Where do you plan on taking this, I guess is what I was trying to say. We want to, yeah, so we want to focus it on stick to family DJ, grow it, maybe get some people to help us, you know, grow us at a business. And yeah, just make it more and more stronger, more and more professional, more and more knowledgeable, I guess, you know, because right. <laughs> it, started, it started from the ground up. So where do people, yeah. the, the, this is how people book you? Or yes. yeah, right there. So it's. Why don't you actually invite the community to to book you for any of their events? Yes, so we we're open to you know if you want to call us, you have a party of any type. So we played at. I also want to say that we play at over already 120 gigs wow. here locally. So that includes Rico, uh, Nogales, and out of town as well, Tucson, Phoenix. Um, we play it. I want to say all over state. Um, so if you want to contact us for any type of party. Um, you would reach out to my dad. He is the manager. He helps make some, helps me with my inquiries because I'm busy at work and of course. sometimes I can't. And for me to balance, you know, both my time at work and all time at work. Yeah, he balances. He helps me on that. Yeah. So while I'm at work, eight hours a day, uh -huh. he's he's in taking care of all you know the inquiries and stuff. Cool. So you would call him at this first number, which is five two zero nine eighty twenty eighty three. And cool. then in case he doesn't answer, you can call me. It's okay. 520-470-7581. Or they can also email you, correct? Yeah, they can email me. It's, it's djvalentertainment at gmail.com. Awesome. So thank you so much for coming on. This was, this was very cool talking to you. <laughs> I love... Thank you. Appreciate you having I, me. I love that this is a family business and the, and the way that you talked about how you're... And also I forgot to mention something else more important that I think that the community should know is I... From why I think I'm the first female DJ here. First Actually, I am, right? DJ. Yeah, yeah I haven't I've seen another one. So I, I want to say that I'm the first female DJ here in Santa Cruz County, especially in Nogales. Yeah. So that's another reason why we also did this. I have one last question. Have you thought about music production? <laughs> yes, yes, that's what I want to focus on. You want to focus on actually producing your own sounds? I have already. Awesome. Yes, I have okay. experience using the DAWs. Producers will know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. But... I, use, I love using Logic Pro. Ableton Live is my favorite for music production and beat making. 
in general. So I took part of my minor in college. I learned a little bit of that too. And so then on my own as well. A couple of weeks ago, my son, I was asking him, you know, I, not to force him to make a decision about his career path now because he's only 12. But oh, yeah, I asked yeah. him what he wanted to do. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he told me he wants to do music production. Nice. Okay, yeah. So cool. what does he what does he need in order to to start? Like, where's a good starting point for a twelve year old? You know, for a keep 12 that year in old? mind. It's a twelve year old. No, okay. he's he's talented because he uses his phone already, right? And he perfect. He, yeah. So he has technology already. Yeah, he's got okay. technology already. But if he so, wants to take it to the next step, what should he do? Or I would say the real question is, what should I buy him? <laughs> <laughs> well, from the th from the theory, theory side, learn music theory. Okay. Uh, it's, a lot of people say it's not necessary, but it, it's the, one I, of the I best think DJs is. use it. So yeah. it, the, it helps, you know. Don't, I've, you know. I've actually talked to him about that specifically. Like, yeah, so know? don't yeah. get so like caught up on it, but it will literally help him. And especially he's a young age, I recommend that he learns an instrument. Okay. Focus on one instrument. Okay. Mostly either piano, guitar, it doesn't really matter which one. But if I had to recommend one for learning, I would say piano because all the notes are just straight out. For sure. In the laid, easily organized like way, I guess. <laughs> yeah. um, but for in terms of equipment, um, I would say get him a laptop, one that has at least minimum 16 gigs of RAM, um, <coughs> Intel i5 minimum. Okay. Um, if you can go higher, great. All right. <laughs> the more expensive, the better. More resources. That's yeah. Okay. So. And like a Mac or what would be best? Or? Either way, Windows or Mac okay. is fine. But for creative purposes, Mac has a better reputation for that. Okay. Um, less technically speaking less drivers to install right so yeah. um and also if he wants to record his vocals i recommend you you get him an interface a small one i have it myself a focus right scarlet um it's an okay. interface where you can connect a mic like this yeah. to look so the computer can understand i actually already have one okay I great have, so I have perfect one for, for, for other production reasons yeah, okay yeah so sure. that one yeah. for sure um and then a midi controller it would be much okay. easier to produce with a midi controller than on your laptop keyboard because you, it's like a piano, and it would be, you get a piano one, right? And it's just easier to basically just control the, the computer, okay. you know? Yeah. And shortcuts and be more productive in your flow. Okay. Um, I learned that the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also, you, can, you need a DAW, Digital Audio Workstation, meaning it's a software program that has the capability to, to record and produce. Okay. Um, there's many out there. The most popular ones are Ableton Live, Logic Pro. Um, there's FL Studio, Pro Tools. Pro Tools is the industry standard. Um, I don't even know it. I just know a little bit, but I, <laughs> I, mean, I want to learn it more. If he can learn it, great. He'll be yeah. very competitive. Okay. Um, there's other ones like, um, what's the other one? Go, oh, yeah, GarageBand. It's the good starter ones. So I would say start him with GarageBand. Okay. He's a good starting DAW, yeah. and then he can transfer those concepts to something more advanced like Ableton or Logic. But it's a, it's a good yeah. jump off point. Yeah, it's awesome. a good starting point. That's where I started. And it's free cool. as well. You don't have to pay for it. Yeah, awesome. once you got to pay for them. So. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Cool, GarageBand. Okay. Cool. All right, so thank you so much. That, that, that was awesome. I, I'm going to pass all that information off to, on to him and keep it in mind for Christmas. Yeah, <laughs> I'll still forget the microphone. You yeah, can't of go course. With a microphone, you gotta right? have a mic. <laughs> um, I got a few mics at home. All right, perfect. Yeah, but, but I don't know if they'll be good enough for what he needs. But for starting, yeah, it's fine. And plus, we could, yeah. he could just play around with messing with the sound. Again, that's the fun part about yeah, it. Yeah, of course, right? And, learn, and that's what the learning process kind of is, is if, if you look at it that way, it's, it's, it's kind of like playing in a sandbox type of thing. Yeah, right? yeah. All right, so thank you so much. And now we're going to jump to my favorite part of the interview, which is the trivia. Oh, okay. All right, are you ready? So we're going <laughs> to yeah, go. I'm trying my best. <laughs> I, I like to do history trivia because yeah, I, I yeah. love history and um, I keep hitting my microphone. Sorry, you got <laughs> <laughs> um, And so I've never researched DJ history before. Nothing past the 19, late 1970s. Like anything starting in the late 1970s with the hip hop movement, okay, I yeah. know pretty well. But okay. anything before that, I don't know. Okay. So that's what I wanted to do research on. And I that's went good. back. All the way, I mean, before World War II. Oh, dang. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll see what I know. All right. right? And then, I'm, I'm going to so, warn you right now. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. No worries. I'm a modern DJ, so if I don't know some of the answers, don't yell well, at that's me. The, <laughs> that's the best part is I always yeah. get questions that I'm positive that you I'm going to be the know. most honest I can. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So this is when and where was the first DJ dance party? I want to say we go back to the 50s. 
You would think 50s? Yeah, it's when so, the rock movement going after World War II started evolving. I would have thought the 50s too. It was okay. actually 1943. Oh, okay. Well, it was close. Yeah, <laughs> and it was jazz music. Jazz, okay. But nice. where? At, um, like where, like a club? Like where did it happen? Which part of the world did it happen in? I want to say Louisiana <laughs> or Africa. Or, <laughs> so you know. it was actually in England. In England, in okay. In England. So, um, and who, and now the last question for this piece of it, who threw that first dance party? Now, this is hard because it's, when you start getting the specific names. Yeah. Um, I'll just tell you, actually. So it was in England, in a place called Otley, England in 1943, and there was a guy named Jimmy Seville. Oh, okay. Yeah, Jimmy Seville was the first dance party DJ. Nice. Crazy, right? Yeah. And it was, and it was jazz music. You're going, you're going way deep. Yeah, I'm like... <laughs> way deep. All right, so now we're going to get a little bit closer in time. Okay. Um, when was the first two turntable, um, you know, when you got two records, you know, it's, you can switch them out, mm -hmm. scratch, whatever. And it was vinyl, too. Yeah, and it was vinyl. Mm -hmm. When was the first two turntable system brought to the United States? I will tell you when it was invented. It was actually invented in the 30s, and it was also invented in England. But okay. when did it come to the United States? I want to say late 60s, early 70s, when the, one you, of the first DJs so? introduced it in a club with a mixer. So it was actually 1955. Oh, okay. 1955. And the person who brought it was a guy named Bob Casey. And he was a okay. sock hop DJ. Okay. You know the 1950s hawk, sock hops that you, you've you ever like seen pictures of these or anything like that? I think you're going way too deep for that. Yeah, so, so picture the most 1950s picture in your head. Yeah, like with bulky the, tech. Yeah, you know, all of um, it. I mean, the, the clothes, the drive-in type so, of vibe. That's what it was. Okay. Yep. I'm assuming, you know, back in the 50s, people dressed more elegantly, you know. I mean, that depends yeah. on your opinion, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, but I pictured that, I guess. I don't know, but. Yeah, but so, yeah. You're going deep. <laughs> so that was our trivia. So we've, we've both been educated now on some DJ history. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah always learning, always learning. I'm for sure. I'm a positive so, mind for learning. <laughs> Valeria. Open to it. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out with us and for telling us about your business. Um, again, you can contact, um, first contact the, the number 520-980-2083 mm -hmm. or email you guys at djvalentertainment at gmail.com to book yes. you, right? And That's you book gonna... all events? Yeah. Yeah, from yep. quinceaneras to bar mitzvahs to weddings. And oh, yeah. Night. Yeah. Or just and a, if we, a... we don't have what you would, let's say you have a certain song and we don't have it, we'll do our best to look for it. You know? Awesome. Yeah. So look for the most random song that you can think of the next <laughs> yeah. time you book her. That's going to be a challenge. Like, like yeah. look, look for a song that's like 100 years old from China or something like that and make her look it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, going back to songs, um, I want to say something that, fun fact about me, um, I tend to sing any phrase, I guess, in a way. Okay. So if you tell me a phrase and it has, if it reminds me of a lyric of a song, I'll most likely sing it to you. Very cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That is yeah. so awesome. Thank you so much again, Valeria. Cool. And thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, we, there's a good chance there will not be a show of my show next week. I'll be having an, uh, a, it's, I don't want to call it an operation. It's a procedure done on my knee. And it may turn into full-on surgery. Surgery, I'm not sure because they don't actually know what the problem is. Oh, okay. Um, so I might be out for, for a week. But I will be back again without fail the following week after Thanksgiving. So I will see you guys then. Cool.